The companion video, Maps for Quantitative Models, illustrates how you can use Big Picture to create maps of quantitative problems to help you and your colleagues understand complex problems better before trying to model them mathematically or with spreadsheets. The current video illustrates how you can enhance these maps with slideshows. These slideshows allow you to go through the map in a sequence of logical steps, each step showing a partial map and, optionally, accompanied by a description of the partial map in that step. If you have not viewed the companion video, you might want to do so first and then return to this video. In any case, the example used is the famous news vendor problem, where a company must place a one-time order for a product in the face of uncertain demand. The map developed in that video is shown here, and it is probably simple enough that you can understand the essential elements just by looking closely at the map. However, a slideshow has already been developed, and I will play it now from the Tools group on the Big Picture ribbon. I will do this slowly enough so that you can study the topics and read the corresponding descriptions. As you can see, a slideshow greatly enhances the basic map, especially for more complex problems than the one illustrated here. By the way, in case you are wondering, the text box descriptions are actually stored on a hidden sheet. But as you will see shortly, there is only one reason why you might need to get into this hidden sheet. Now I will show how you can create a slideshow from an existing map. You begin by clicking the slideshow item on the Big Picture ribbon. Almost everything is created through the resulting tabbed dialog box. You first have to create a series of slides, each containing the topics you want to show on that slide. And then later, you can create the accompanying text box descriptions, although these are optional. Note the inherited topics choices at the bottom. By default, each slide inherits all prior slides. This means, for example, that if topics 1, 2, and 3 are on slide 1, and you then add topics 4 and 5 to slide 2, slide 2 will show topics 1 to 5. However, depending on the structure of your map, you might want to experiment with the other two inheritance options. I will add a first slide. Note that when I then click the Select Topics for Slide button, there are two choices on how the topics in the right pane are arranged. Tree order, left to right order, tree order. You can experiment with these two options to see which works best for you. Now I will add slides and their topics. Of course, the ordering is up to you. You need to decide which ordering tells the story best. If you want to preview your slides at any point, you can click the play button. The options tab provides a number of options you might want to try. The one I want to illustrate here is the display slide description boxes. I will check it and again click play. You can see that each slide is now accompanied by a text box waiting for a description. When you eventually click OK, you can play your slideshow through the buttons on the Big Picture ribbon.
You can also click the slideshow button to modify the slideshow. When I click the play button to show the first slide, you see the first description text box. This is a good time to add text to it and also to position, resize, and format it. Here are the rules. If you want to add formatting to the text box, you should unhide the hidden sheet and format the template text box on the right as you like. There's the hidden sheet. And here's the template text box. I will simply color its background tan, but you can add fancier formatting if you like. Then all the other text boxes in the slideshow will inherit this formatting. After formatting this template text box, you can rehide the sheet. Back in the map, if you move any text box, all other text boxes will have the same position for their upper left corners. You can choose this positioning so that the text boxes won't overlap the map. Third, different text boxes can have different sizes, depending on the lengths of the descriptions they contain. You can resize each manually. Now it's just a matter of typing descriptions into the text boxes for the other slides, but to save time, I won't do so here. Remember that while you're in play mode, you can't do anything else to the map, so be sure to click the stop button to get out of play mode. It's not enough to play all of the slides because the slideshow will just start over from slide one. You have to click stop. In summary, slideshows add tremendous value to your maps, especially when they are accompanied by descriptions of the slides. If you are giving a presentation to colleagues who start with only a vague understanding of the problem at hand, they will come out of the presentation with a much better understanding of how everything fits together.